So we've done a lot of miles since uh, Australia. We've been through a couple of countries, national nationalities, I think. And uh, we've had unprecedented good weather for sailing, I have to say. The Augustina, she's really shown her stuff in, in many different colors. And by the, by the Villa Sacal record, seven hours, which is about a 13 knot average for nine hours. What did I say? Seven hours for nine hours. Now we're getting really tricky. Eh? I think we got the right machine to get to the Andes. Yep. Yeah. This is a traveler's guide to uh, island style eye language. This is, um, this means yes. <laughs> This means, um, okay. <laughs> this means, no way, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> this means, I don't understand you. <laughs> <laughs> this means, I think you're really sexy and I want to go home with you. What was that one? Hey. Hey bro, how's it going? What you been up to? And how's the family? <laughs> Pretty much all you need to get by. I'll be careful not to be like... Your eyebrows do a little twitch. Because <laughs> otherwise you get jumped. Hey Kay. Over here we have uh, Captain Kinzu, aka Otto Zilch, navigator extraordinaire, connecting with the universe. I'm Fire. just uh, organising the uh, psychology of the human mind. Good job. So, excuse me, Mr. Action Figure Freud, I suppose you tell me uh, some small thing, thing about the evolving rhythms tour. Ah, uh, yes, well, um, I don't know about all that. It seems to me like a lot of noise, yes, a lot of noise and uh, banging. It's obviously a I think what we call the custom economy, the traditional economy, is, you know, the permastrata of our society, like the fact that people have their own land, uh, they live off the land in terms of having gardens, food gardens, which is the main occupation of anyone in the islands, is to maintain and make sure they have gardens and food from the gardens. And people live on their ancestral land, that their ancestors are buried there, they have sites there, so that there's that continuity that people live with every day in the rural areas. 
where they live on their own land. And I think just having their own land is a key factor in um, being able to maintain that cultural continuity. I mean, that's what is missing in places like Aotearoa or Australia. In Vanuatu, especially in Pentecost, we don't like to lose, lose our culture because it's our life. So if we lose our culture, then we lose everything. Our life will be hard in the future. But our culture will live as a simple life. Um, I think it's because of our culture. And because our culture teaches us how to be, how to be one with the, the land, one with the, the environment, one with the sea. Because once you are part of the, if you are part of the nature, you live with the nature and you are the nature. Um, traditional knowledge about um, species and in, in the bush, what, what you can use for certain things and, and that aspect of traditional knowledge that's maintained, that connection between um, the natural environment and what people are doing and being able to that, that being perpetuated. But also one of the things that has kept our culture so strong is that um, is the low level of integration to the capitalist economy that we have in Vanuatu. Because you can walk from the north up to the south, down to the south, without money, without, uh, without uh, food, without uh, belongings for sleep, to sleep. So you just find your shelter on the way. When you go to, uh, to the, you find a village on the way, then they said, hello, come and have a, a drink of water. And then if there is uh, food, said come and eat. And if, the, if it is nearly dark, they said, okay, we stop, you stop. We have to sleep. And then in the morning, then you begin your journey. All around Pentecost, without all these things that I am, I am telling you about like money and all this. Mm. Until when you can stop again in your village, in the night. So our life is just simple. It's, it's what uh, in any other context you'd call poverty. Vanuatu is defined as a least developed country by United Nations, which means that um, we have a population that lives on less than a dollar a day, um, which in terms of conventional statistics is extreme poverty. But when you go and see people living on their land, off their gardens, and, and actually money not being even in the equation of well-being, then uh, that, that sort of explains in, to some way why we've been able to maintain that uh, cultural continuity because we're kind of marginalized from the global capitalist economy and that marginalization has in many ways saved us from becoming dependent and losing a lot of those, losing our land, which is always what the capitalist economy does first, is take away your land to make you a worker. We've managed to avoid all that by keeping our land and so on and so it's only in places like where we are now, this island, where the capitalist economy is really intruded, that you start seeing the lease out, leasing out of land, people losing their land, and instead of making gardens, instead now having to work because there are no places to make gardens anymore. So it's starting to come in, um, and we hope that we can, I mean, we're doing our best, uh, many of us, to try and uh, maintain the traditional economy and preserve it and promote it, and make people know that it's not money that gives you a good life which is what all the aid donors and everyone's trying to tell us, you know, the more economic growth you have, the more investment, blah, 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 the more money you have, the better off you will be. And that's just like a total illusion. Uh, it's almost like a trap. And so uh, many of us are trying here to promote the traditional economy and we've managed to convince the government to declare 2007 last year and this year 2008 the year of the traditional economy just so we can raise awareness about the fact that it's not money that makes people in Vanuatu happy.
it's not money that makes people in Vanuatu happy. It's the land, it's all our environment, it's all our families, the fact that we uh, still, in, still enjoy strong cultural identity, this kind of thing is what makes us happy and healthy and, you know, a nation that um, to many other people from outside is, is seen as being, having amazing people, friendly people, that kind of thing. I mean, it all comes from that. It, it's nothing to do with money. We're at a stage where we can decide, you know, we've seen all the examples around us. And, and we're not that too fast, we're not too slow, we're just like, just there. And like, life is not really hard yet, but it's going to be, I mean, it's just human evolution. It's just a matter of how we tackle it. I think it's because we have a very nice blend with the environment. I mean, um, missionaries came around in ooh, 1800s mid 1800s but they, they influenced a lot of violence but not that much I mean we still and because the population was not too big um, there was no lack of resources no no need for fighting over over things that were on the land that kind of thing um, I think it's because of our culture and because our culture teaches us how to be how to be one with the, the land one with the, the environment one with the sea we have totems. Uh, I, I know a lot of cultures have totems. They have certain animals that they claim are their ancestors. They belong to a certain tree or a certain thing in the sea, fish, and so on and so forth. And it's because of those connections and a lot of more other reasons is why we we are, we we understand, you know, how to look after the land. And also, um, we live in a very communal society. I mean, a lot of um, societies used to live in that kind of way. Uh, uh, no offense, but a lot of new introduced ideas, um, especially European ideas of, you know, individualism, and, and that breaks down a lot of, of those um, communal ideas, good ideas, and how to work and how to relate to other people around you. I've been traveling around Vanuatu. I've been walking around Vanuatu as a, te as a teacher. My, um, my impression is all the cultures could be different, but there is one common thing among all the cultures of Vanuatu. The common thing is respect. That respect. Then they said, hello. Respect among each other. Come and have a, a drink of water and the way of living together. And if there is uh, food, said come and eat. And if, the, if it is nearly dark, they said, okay, we stop, you stop. We have to sleep. And then in the morning, then you begin your journey. I think this is the most important thing that keeps always Vanuatu the best place to visit. I and mean, I think this is part of the nature. If, if we believe that um, scientifically people said, well, the mankind, it is, uh, comes out from the monkeys. But in the Christian uh, belief, we believe that someone is creating this world. And this world must be, we believe that God is creating this world. But in our culture, we also believe that the world is created by someone, but we never know that it is God. But we have the, our um, language name for God. But we say that person is invisible, that's it. We believe in that. And it is our belief with the custom and that keeps us closer to each other and keeps us also closer to the nature. Because once you are part of the if you are part of the nature, you live with the nature and you are the nature.
Um, and because of this, there's that respect in it. Um, you, you don't find people starving because you'll always have somewhere where you can find food. There'll be either relatives or friends, you know, that kind of thing. You don't find the other kind of hardships. Even though we consider it a devel developing country, you don't find those kind of hardships um, that other countries face. I mean, like America, for example, less, uh, more than the population of Vanuatu in America live under the po poverty line. And even though they, they dish out money in like chunk loads throughout the world, they have like millions of people who live without like, you know, good food, basic um, essentials for, for having a good life, like food, shelter, water, and clothing, uh, which is a shame, you know. And I, I think that's why we are, are very happy, you know, because we are content with what we have. That's how our ancestors lived. And yeah, I think that's why people are so happy. It's because people know each other, they relate which is what lacks in a lot of cities that I've been to, like, in the world. You go to a place like Australia, you can walk all day and, and nobody will smile at you. <laughs> Sir? You miss us have to join dance with us? Okay. Yeah.